everybody. My name is Martha Alter Hines with Living the One Light. All right. In this video, I'm going to talk about the first of our eclipses for this upcoming, very powerful, of course, eclipse season. And I am going to talk about not only the eclipses, but what I'm realizing as I'm dropping, I'm finally dropping into the energetics of this eclipse season, which is very alive already, has been, but I'm really, the spirit world is really showing me <laughs> what they want me to kind of, mm, how they want me to enter into this energetic and how they want me to support all of us, whoever feels called to drop into this energetic together. So I'm also going to give a sense of the bigger backdrop and, um, the context of the time we're in because it's of course very powerful that's the repeated the repeated phrase over and over again um so that backdrop the big 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 base note of that backdrop is of course that we just had pluto re-enter capricorn for the very last time in our entire lifetimes so pluto re-entered Capricorn on Sunday, uh, September 1st. So I'm recording this video on September 4th. So three days ago, as of the time I'm recording this, Pluto re-entered Capricorn. And, um, and then the next day, Monday, September 2nd, we had the new moon in Virgo. And so that new moon in Virgo set, it started the lunar cycle of our first of our eclipses for this eclipse season because the first eclipse is going to be the full moon in Pisces. Um, but I want to back up to Pluto having re-entered Capricorn. Okay, so as you probably have heard me say, or Pam Gregory or Heather Ends, uh, you know, lots and lots of people saying, <sighs> Pluto has now re-entered Capricorn, and it will be there until November 19th of this year. And that is going to be the very, very, very last time we will ever be here in these bodies with Pluto and Capricorn. And for the next 20 years after November 19th, Pluto will be in Aquarius. So this last dip into uh, Pluto being in Capricorn is a really big deal because it's hovering just right there at the very, very end of Capricorn as it's, you know, in this two month period, two and a half months. Um, and so it's, uh, and it's doing it for the last time. So it's, it's, it's like really, really deeply intense, very much an energy of, all right, guys, we're doing this. <laughs> like, whatever this Pluto and Capricorn thing is, let's get it done. Let's do this right. Let's really like, let's mean it. That kind of an energy. That's how I'm feeling it. And these eclipses are the last, it's the, it's the very, very last eclipse season that will ever happen in our lifetimes with Pluto in Capricorn. So eclipse energy in general, it can be this powerful, beautiful catalyst for change and realigning of ourselves. Um, and I made a whole video on tips for Uranus retrograde and eclipse season. And I talk a lot about alignment and I channeled a message in there about alignment. So definitely go back and enjoy that. Be very relevant now and many times. Um, because on that same day that Pluto went back into Capricorn, just several hours before that, Uranus also went retrograde, right? And at the time that Uranus went retrograde, Pluto was still barely, 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 barely in Aquarius. So Uranus was ruling Pluto as it as Uranus went retrograde and as Pluto was just entering, just crossing back over into Capricorn. So Uranus is a big player in all of this too and will be such a humongous player as Pluto then goes back into Aquarius for 20 years. Okay, so yes, so I really want to give attention to this energetic of Pluto now being 
in Capricorn for the next two and a half months, because I think it's, it's the fundamental opportunity that we have right now. And it's the fun, it's like the underlying ground that we're standing on, um, in this moment, right. It's kind of like the eclipses are a big deal. Lots of things are a big deal, but you know, it's almost like we could be hearing the song of the eclipses, but if we forget about the, the ground we're standing on, which is this Pluto in Capricorn, we might miss the whole point of the song of the eclipses. <laughs> that that's that's the energetic energy I'm getting from the spirit world. It's like, come back to the come back to the real point here. Okay, so the real point that I feel <clears throat> is that we've been spending years and years and years now with the Pluto and Capricorn energetic, and especially over the last four or five ish years. Um, Pluto being at the end degrees of Capricorn has, there's been this extra emphasis of the Pluto and Capricorn energies. And as we know, that energy is very much about dismantling of structures that no longer serve, getting the ground fertile and ready to construct the new, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we've been in that energy for a long time. There was a, that period of time, two or three years when Pluto was squaring Eris, Zena, and there's, you know, just lots and lots of energy that we know about. We're very familiar with about this, this feeling essentially that, okay, we did that. <laughs> we did the whole, you know, kind of destructive energy way of living in our world. We're done. No more. Um, and of course, the only thing we can really, really control is our own, our own way of being and our own choice to come back into the wholeness that we are, the remembering of who we are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, these are the themes I keep talking about in all of my videos, including in the Wholeness Way series, which if you haven't signed up for, please do. It's totally free. And it's key, key, key to this time. Um, and... So as we also know, as we look around in this time, of course, there's continuing to be lots and lots of very disturbing things, destructive things, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't have control over that, but we do have control over coming back to our own wholeness, deeply, deeply, deeply letting go of structures that no longer serve us, even in our own being. Um, okay, so, th so that, that need to continue to be doing that is extra powerfully strong with Pluto now having gone back into Capricorn, Capricorn structures, how we organize society, et cetera, how we even organize our own conception of what is um, ethical or in alignment or... Uh, good or bad or you know all of that what's an integrity and what's not what's wise and what's not coming back into the really deeply grounded sense of ourself as a wisdom keeper that's big 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 okay so so that's like that's the thing to keep in like the eye on the prize is really this fundamental um Like, I just keep seeing, uh, like, the trees dying to turn into compost, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's like, we are in this fundamentally powerful, pivotal moment where we we need to be so focused on this reality that we have it under our control, our ability to let go of the structures of ourselves that no longer serve as we then move into the new. Okay, so I think I've made that point. Um, so given that underlying point, then let me show you the energetic of the two eclipses coming up. And I'm gonna spend a, more time in this video on the lunar eclipse, because it's the first one, and then I'll make a separate video for the the solar eclipse, will be this, which will be the second one. And then actually there's also gonna be a third almost eclipse on October 17th, 
um, which I'll talk about briefly in this video. And then, you know, closer to that time, I'll make another one. And I want to mention here, I'll talk more about this at the end of the video, but I'm going to be holding a, an eclipse workshop. And this morning it finally dropped in <laughs> what this eclipse, what this eclipse workshop is really being asked to be about and how it's going to be structured. So I originally, and it's very relevant to, to what, um, the power of these eclipses and the way that they flow, whether or not you feel called to come to the workshop. I just want to explain the workshop because it's actually, you could do these kinds of, you could do what I'm planning to do in the workshop on your own, or you come to the workshop and do it with us. So completely whatever you feel called to do, great. Um, but um, yeah, originally I was thinking that the workshop was going to be a one-time event. We're going to talk about the eclipses, obviously, but I got it today. Nope. <laughs> it's going to be a two-time event. And those of you who have already signed up, don't worry. I'm not charging any money. Just You can come once. You can come both times. They're both going to be recorded. Um, so the first event, the first workshop is going to be on next Tuesday, September 10th. So one week before the first eclipse. And then, the, and then three weeks later, on October 1st, the day before the second eclipse, I'm going to hold a, a follow-up gathering because here's the really cool thing about these eclipses. The first eclipse is the lunar eclipse where it's going to be a full moon in Pisces. Um, and the moon will be on the north node and the sun will be on the south node. And so I'll talk more about this as I get along in this video but the the energetic the main energetic i feel in the first eclipse because it's a it's a a full moon and it's in pisces and it and the moon is going to be conjunct neptune there are such incredibly powerful energetics of letting go letting go letting go letting go letting go big time letting go and big time radical forgiveness. So it's like a radical letting go, radical forgiveness energy. And so in the first gathering, which will be a week before that first eclipse, I will, um, about, I'll talk about, you know, kind of what is an eclipse just in general, that'll be something you can come back to for any eclipse season. Then I will talk about the energetics of the, the eclipses in, in general, um, both of them, actually all three of them, and and specifically look at some charts to see where that might be falling in your chart. Uh, and then, then we're gonna drop in for you personally, what is being activated on a deep soul knowing level? What is being activated in you that's ready to go, ready to release, ready to radically forgive? And in a minute, I'll talk a little more about what I mean by radical forgiveness. Um, Cause it's not about, you know, forgetting or excusing things. It's, it's a different purpose, right? But that radical forgiving, the radical letting go is unbelievably key to the fundamental opportunity that we have right now and actually really what we're, we're needed desperately to do is to be letting go of these structures that no longer serve so that the radical forgiving and the radical letting go is a key step in this last kind of push of pluto in capricorn so, so in the uh, eclipse workshop, that first one on September 10th next week, you know, I will, at the, the second half of it will really be a channeled guided experience of coming into your own, your own deep knowing of what the energetic of that eclipse is about for you. And, um, and collectively we will then do a ceremony a letting a, a radical forgiveness and letting go ceremony. So that'll be the first part one of the two eclipse gatherings. The second one will then be again, three weeks later, it'll be the day before the second eclipse. So it'll be on October 1st. Um, both, both gatherings will be at 10 AM 
their balloons, <laughs> 10 a.m. Um, Pacific time. And and again, you could be doing this, you could do this completely on your own. You don't need to come to the eclipse gatherings. You could just do your own ceremony on your own. But if you want to be held in a space to do it together, you're very, very welcome. Please come. Um, but I'm just outlining it here, even if you don't feel called to be a part of the eclipse gatherings. So so that second gathering then is going to be the day before the, the solar eclipse, which is a new moon on the south node in Libra, 10 Libra, 10 degrees of Libra. And so again, that first eclipse is this powerful letting go, letting go, letting go energy. And the second eclipse as a new moon is, is basically coming into and setting intentions for the new right so so in that first gathering we'll we'll talk about what is an eclipse what's going on with all three of these the two eclipses and then the third almost eclipse and um and then doing a radical forgiveness ceremony and then in the the second gathering it'll be uh another ceremony of setting intentions for the new okay so again you could do that do that on your own if you feel called or do it with us <laughs> either way. Um, great. So let me show you the chart of this first eclipse and I'll explain a little more kind of nuances of what I'm talking about. So powerful, so beautiful, so much opportunity, incredible healing. Okay. So here is the chart of the full moon lunar eclipse, September 17th or 18th, depending on where you are in the world. Um, <clears throat> the moon will be at 25 degrees, 40 minutes of Pisces. The sun at 25 degrees, 40 minutes of Virgo. Uh, the sun will be on the south node. The south node will still be in Libra. The north node will still be in Aries. And this is the first eclipse that's giving us a peek into that Pisces Virgo dance that's going to be coming up next year when the nodes move into Pisces and Virgo. Um, so we're kind of straddling these two energetics, the, the Libra Aries dance, and then also the Pisces Virgo dance. And what we, what we're, what's showing up in this particular eclipse is actually fascinatingly the ways in which those two sets of energetics, those two polarities work together beautifully can actually really complement each other because here's what's fascinating to me. Two of the biggest things that jump out at me about this chart are actually the ways in which Mars and Venus who happen to be the rulers of the nodes right now, Venus ruling Libra, Mars ruling um, Aries. So they're very, very, very prominent uh, in general. I mean, Venus and Mars are definitely incredibly prominent because they rule the nodes right now. Okay. And so they're going to be ruling the nodes at the time of this eclipse. And the reason the two of them jump out at me so strongly is because, number one, Mars is going to be uh, squaring the nodes on the eclipse. Very significant. <laughs> and Mars will also be opposite Ceres, which has been squaring the nodes. And then Venus, which rules the south node, will have just passed the south node. It, Venus was on the south node at the time of the new moon we just had in Virgo. And now Venus is going to be at 23 of Libra opposite Chiron, who's at 22 of Aries. And Venus at 23, 54 minutes of Libra is essentially right on the star Spica. And also... Um, if you equate stars with the ecliptic, um, Venus is actually also right on Arcturus. So um, let me uh, let me hang on one second. I'm going to put those um, stars on this chart. So 
you can see that. Um, hang on one second. All right. So yeah, I've now added the stars, Spica and Arcturus. So you can see they're both, you know, again, if we equate stars with the ecliptic, which is often not accurate, but if we do that, um, Spica and Arcturus both fall at 24 degrees of Libra, right? Within a few minutes of where the Venus is going to be. And let me show you also in the sky um, where that is going to be and and where some other parts of this chart are going to be falling um, in terms of the astronomy. So, okay, uh, let me show you Venus. Here is Venus, like precisely on the star Spica. So Spica or Spica, depending on how you pronounce it, um, is this a star, a really key star in the constellation of Virgo. And it is right where in that constellation, uh, this goddess is holding the the shaft, the shaft of wheat. So Spica is associated with so many different things, but it's definitely um, associated with the gifts of the divine feminine and the gifts in particular of the elder divine feminine often. Um, you know, Virgo, the constellation is associated with many, many, many different goddesses throughout in many cultures and throughout time. So basically the Spica, to put it in a nutshell, Spica is definitely connected with, I connect her definitely very strongly with the divine feminine and the gifts that are needed to be brought forward by the divine feminine in this time and in our world. And then here, Arcturus, which is not on the ecliptic at all. Spica is, Arcturus is not. Um, but if you were to equate Arcturus with the ecliptic, it would also be considered at 24 degrees of Libra. But you can see it's in a totally different constellation. It's over here. It's in this Boots constellation. But again, long story short, Arcturus is often associated with the divine masculine. So to have Venus conjunct uh, Spica, very, very, very definitely conjunct Spica. And then, you know, in the vicinity uh, energetically of Arcturus, it's really bridging for me the, the feminine and the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And then opposite Venus is Chiron. And Chiron in and of itself um, is often associated with the wounded masculine, especially in Aries. But um, but it is also a bridging of the feminine and the masculine, the healing of bringing back together du the dualities of who we are, especially on an energy body level. And so if we look at where Chiron is going to be, or I mean, actually already is in the sky, Chiron is sitting in the, it's in the sign, the seasonal sign of Aries, but it's in the, um, the constellation of Pisces right in the middle of the two fish and not too far from the Andromeda galaxy. So, um, so yeah, as Chiron is making its way into the, toward the end degrees, it's, it's been really sitting in the middle of Aries and now it's kind of heading toward its time where it's going to be more in the end degrees of, of Aries. I'm feeling Chiron's energetic connecting with this Andromeda galaxy energy much more strongly. And I just made a video with Margot Zen about the Andromeda galaxy. And then I channeled a video from the Andromeda energetic. And I, uh, and, and as we talk about in, well, as we, actually I talk about in both videos, um, the Andromeda galaxy is the, is the largest galaxy in our local group. And the, our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are now known to be actually merging. So it was thought that they will be merging in, you know, billions of years from now. But actually what scientists are realizing is that the two galaxies are already starting to exchange stars, which is really cool. And so in the, the channeled video that I did a couple of days ago, um, which I definitely recommend, 
really what what came through is something that I've been feeling personally very powerfully is this energetic of <clears throat> of what it is for the divine feminine and the divine masculine in this time to be releasing what I've been feeling is like the a membrane of separation, the illusion of separation of between the two. So uh, let me come out of screen share so I can say a little more about that. So, okay, fundamentally, again, where Pluto has now re-entered Capricorn. And one of the biggest things that we absolutely have to be dismantling as we're dismantling the structures of our, the way our world has been structured for how long time, <laughs> long time, um, is the way in which we have been in this illusion of separation on all kinds of levels, but especially with regard to the, the feminine and the masculine and our constructs around gender and sexuality and dominance and passivity and aggression and violence, all of that, right? It all, pretty much you could bring most of the suffering and the strife of our planet probably on some level to the the imbalance between the feminine and the masculine the divine feminine and the divine masculine and um so something i've been feeling and getting guided to in my own being this is really a personal process for me but I, i'm being asked to share it <laughs> because it, it is um really fundamental i think to what is is happening in our world and and the opportunity that we have. So it's a little tender for me to share because it's, it's still new in my own personal journey. Um, and a lot of it is very personal. So, but I'll share this because it feels important. So the way I've been feeling it is that the ultimate reality is source. Source is the one. As we choose to incarnate on a soul level, the way I'm the way I'm shown it is that we come out of source kind of like a golden drop. And that golden drop that is the the soul that is me, the soul that is, that is you, that drop comes out of source. And at least in my case, probably in lots of most of us, that's that drop splits into the the feminine and the masculine the one becomes the two right and then the two becomes the many the many becomes the infinite um and and now there's this need for the infinite to become the many the many to become the two the two to become the one well it really what fundamentally what mm, on the biggest level there's this need for us to remember the wholeness the totality of infinity and the one being part of the one. <laughs> so, so as we remember that, um, one of the gateways back to the totality of ourselves as the one, the wholeness of ourselves is to remember ourselves as the infinite, the many, the two, and the one. Um, and, and so as we go from ourselves as the two to the one, in other words, as we remember ourselves as the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And then as we do healing to bring those two back together into the reality of the one, of course, part of what comes up is this deep, intense suffering that has been going on for, again, long, long time, very long time. <laughs> and it is real and it has been awful, terrible, right? Lots and lots and lots of pain there. Um, but on the ultimate level, that separation between the feminine and the masculine is just not real. It's not true. We're all part of the one. All energetics are part of source itself. And so what I've been feeling in myself is I've been having this really, really powerful journey experience of feeling in me, my own inner feminine, my own inner masculine, basically re-colliding into the one. And, and I've been feeling it very similar to what I channeled the other day 
of you know the like two galaxies coming back to merging back into the one the way that similar to how the andromeda galaxy and the milky way galaxy are merging and eventually they're going to become one galaxy it's, it's very similar energetic in me of to that and in part of that experience for me there's this sense of um that there's been this membrane again it's it's a, it's an illusion but there's been this membrane of separation between the divine feminine and the divine masculine and i've been having this in my own personal journey again very powerful very tender <laughs> very a little bit scary to say out loud but yeah basically what's been happening is um like miracle it's like a total miracle the 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 membrane between the two inside myself is gone or it's going it's just gone no I, it's accurate to say it's gone i can't even believe that's a thing i can't even believe that's real but that's what i'm feeling like, like that membrane is just gone and so what the spirit world is saying is that as these two galaxies if you want to say that literally or metaphorically as the two galaxies of the divine feminine and the divine masculine come back together there's this component of needing to release the membrane between the two so that and 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 that here's where that radical forgiveness component comes in of you know this pisces full moon lunar eclipse energy is so so powerfully uh giving us the opportunity to let completely radically let that s-h-i-t go let it just go let it go we're done we don't need that we don't need the illusion of separation is it's gone we just we can let it go because then we can finally finally after eons come back to the reality of the wholeness that we are which is just fundamentally true. It's just it's just true, right? Um, and we can be that wholeness that we are, which is like, wow, thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm personally feeling like. How did that happen? And how was that never a thing until now? Wow, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, that's the potential right now for all of us, for everybody. Um and so when we have these themes in this chart of Venus being Venus being conjunct Spica and then you know Arcturus that again stars having to do with the divine mass feminine and the divine masculine together in the sky with Venus right there and then opposite Chiron who is the wounded healer in Aries especially the wounded masculine but the 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 mentor the the healer uh masculine as well coming into that the area of the sky that is very much resonating with this andromeda galaxy who i you know who's merging with our our milky way literally um and uh, andromeda galaxy i associate with the divine feminine i don't know if i associate the milky way with i'd have to feel into that more um the divine masculine I don't know but but anyway in any case these two galaxies are merging and there's definitely this connection for me um as they are merging of this energetic of us coming back to the wholeness the totality of who we are on every level and and just this chart of this pisces full moon lunar eclipse is so potently alive with the incredible, powerful healing potential of that radical forgive, forgiving, like without the stories, like we don't even need to think, we don't even need to know the story, like not spiritual bypassing, but let's let this go. Let's, let's, let's be done with this crap, <laughs> you know, the, the, yeah, the, radical deep forgiving of ourselves radical deep forgiving of of others um again not making excuses you know we need to have clear boundaries we need to do things that are in integrity and uh, very clear 
And actually Saturn in Pisces is really helping us to have clear boundaries, be really in integrity, maintain those boundaries, et cetera, at the same time that we do the healing, right? Um, but as we do that healing, as we do that radical forgiving, it's literally letting that membrane, the illusion of separation that, you know, that, that membrane that's like keeping us separate and that separation isn't even real to begin with. Like, let's let it go. <laughs> let's let that go. Um, like why, why it doesn't need to be there. We're done. We're done with that. Um, and, and then another component of what rushes in for me when I, when I'm let, when I'm personally letting go of that membrane, that illusion of separation is in that radical forgiving is also another component of Pisces, which is powerful, truly unconditional love. And again, not unconditional in, in the sense of spiritual bypassing, not unconditional in the sense of letting people do bad things and ignoring it. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but remembering what, <clears throat> what it is to actually for real, unconditionally love an other and unconditionally love ourselves. And I'll bring up the chart one more time because, um, because like I was saying, Mars in Cancer is going to be opposite series and they're both going to be squaring the nose of the moon at the time of this eclipse. Um, and so series among many, many other things absolutely has to do with unconditional love. And Mars is going to be in Cancer. Cancer has to do with, you know, the home, the family, ancestry, et cetera, et cetera. Series in Capricorn also definitely also very much has to do with ancestry. So there's this like tenderness. Um, let me just take a minute and feel this. Um, mm, yeah. So so Mars also is ruling Chiron in Aries and. Um, this deep tenderness. I mean, what I really feel in that, I feel like almost like I could cry. It's the sense of we're going to have Mars, actually Mars in cancer is a whole topic that I will probably make a video on just all in and of itself, because as you might already know, Mars is going to actually go, it's now in cancer and it's going to be moving through cancer. And then it's going to enter Leo in a couple of months. It's going to go up to six degrees of Leo, and then it's going to go retrograde and it's going to go back into cancer. And so uh, Mars is going to be in cancer for the majority of the next eight months-ish, which is a really long time. And so we're, we're going to have this opportunity to really feel what is that Mars in cancer energy about. Again, I'll, I'll make a whole video just about that because it's such a big deal. And it's going to be squaring the nodes of the moon, again, like on this eclipse and... Um, you know, during part of its time in cancer, it will be squaring the notes. So it's extra, extra, extra big deal. And part of, part of just one aspect of the energetic of Mars in cancer is this, the tenderness of the masculine, the sensitivity and the, the nurturing of the masculine, the, the need of the masculine to be held and to be recognized as beautiful, sensitive, tender, energetic in and of itself. Um, like, I mean, really could cry. I mean, really could cry. And as we know, boys and men and the masculine in general, obviously, uh, you know, we don't need to even say it out loud, but I'll say it out loud. What boys are not supposed to cry. Boys are not supposed to be sensitive, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's just true. That's, that's how our world has operated. And that's not okay. That's incredibly not okay. Just like it's not okay for women to only need supposed to be subservient and have no voice and all of that. You know, we're rebalancing our approach to the feminine and the masculine on all levels and all genders. And 
just gen gender in general um and sexuality in general <laughs> so yeah there's there's this opportunity in in this time to radically radically give the feminine what it needs give the masculine what it needs and for the two to be able to completely fall in love with each other again like in a in a in a real way in a way where their that membrane is gone that illusion of separation is gone and they can see each other for who they actually really are and what they really actually need um and they can do this deep grieving series also is very much about grieving deep grieving deep letting go um deep powerful healing healing work and um you know again not bypassing just honest deep reflecting deep 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 seeing each other for real maybe for the first time ever in a sense and and I'm talking about between each other, but I'm talking about within ourselves too. There's so many layers to all of this. Um, yeah, and and actually, also at the time of this eclipse, Saturn in Pisces is going to be basically exactly opposite Mercury. So, uh, and Mercury in Virgo near ish the Sun with Vesta, Pisces. Uh, mm, Saturn um, ruling Pluto in Pisces, not super close to the moon and Neptune, but there. And, and so, you know, Saturn opposite Mercury, really deeply holding, grounding communication, conversation that maybe needs to happen around forgiving and but doing again doing it in a very grounded discerned sacred way virgo um there could be really powerful deep conversations that happen again maybe within yourself but maybe with each other maybe with a significant other or maybe with whoever it happens to be a friend whatever it is just powerful deep real listening deep real hearing of each other a deep honoring of ourselves deep forgiving of ourselves deep honoring of each other deep forgiving of each other and then um yeah and then as you can probably feel you know then the next i'll just say i'll just touch on this super briefly because i'm gonna make a whole other video about it and i'm also going to be doing the eclipse workshop um we can come for more on this but here is the the here's the chart for the second eclipse which is a new moon solar eclipse at 10 degrees of libra on the south node in libra um and um so you know long story short essentially bottom line the energetic of that first eclipse the full moon in pisces is just so incredibly deeply powerfully healing uh and that letting go of you know all of this imbalance that illusion of separation between the masculine and the feminine and just on all kinds of levels and then once we do that deep 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 letting go the deep listening the deep forgiving all of it two weeks later we have this second eclipse which then is such a potent powerful opportunity to come into setting new intentions brand new intentions how can i do this a new way yet in a sun, another sense an old way because it's on the south node of the moon so what gifts from my deep knowing my deep past can i bring into this presence of the new around libra relating relationship um, relating with the other, relating with myself and still North node in 
Aries. So still needing to balance, you know, how can I do this Libra Aries dance in a powerfully, powerfully new way? I get my needs met. I'm fully honoring of me. And I can be in relationship with another. And this new moon is conjunct um, Estrella, Black Moon Lilith, and Mercury. So, you know, again, there's so much, so much there, but basically, how can I do this in a way that's going to actually serve the earth? That's going to be in integrity and I'm going to be in my full power and, um, and I'm going to be able to communicate in a really grounded in, in, in a word, way that's in an integrity and integrity with my own needs, your needs. Um, and we're going to create this earth together. That's really the bottom line of, of the second eclipse. So, okay, that was a lot. <laughs> um, but you get it, right? It's This is a big deal. This is a big opportunity. These eclipses are like, like we have this time of Pluto being now in Capricorn for the last time ever in our whole entire lives. And these eclipses set us up for how we're going to seriously do this. <laughs> let's, let's really, really do this. And the cosmos is supporting us to really, really do this. Um, to deeply let go, forgive, 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 let go on the energetic energy body level. We don't need that illusion of separation anymore. We don't need that membrane separating the feminine and the masculine anymore. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And, and come back to the wholeness that we are, come back to the totality that we are and deeply set this intention, that second eclipse of how we're going to be in relationship to ourselves and in relationship to others in relationship between the feminine, the masculine, all, all of life, all genders, um, in, in the way that is precisely just right, just in alignment for you and for this co-creation of new earth or the earth, you know, the way that we are here to be doing together really truly together <laughs> so, which is why we need libra we're not here to do it as islands <laughs> um yeah but it's a big big skill to learn how to be honoring of ourselves and honoring of others at the same time beautiful um yeah so again you know i definitely invite you to to do these kind of um, radical forgiveness ceremony for the lunar eclipse and then setting the new intentions on the, the the solar eclipse and you can do that on your own or but if you want to come and do it in community and do it held by me and by the spirit world it'd be you know the channeled versions of doing that together then come to the eclipse gatherings they'll both be recorded um, you can be there live or not be there live. You can do it on your own. You have the recordings indefinitely. So if that calls to you, I would love to have you. Um, and in that first, in the first, uh, anyway, if you want to volunteer your chart, feel free to do that. We will look at some charts. Um, definitely in the first one, we might also actually look at them in the second one now that I think of it, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so I think you get the idea. You're very welcome. Join anything that calls to you. And if you would like to look specifically at your chart more in depth, I do have some times available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, so feel free to book that if you would like to do that. Um, and yeah, and the Wholeness Way series, if you haven't signed up for it, definitely please do. It's entirely free and available indefinitely. You can use it over and over and over again. I've been getting so much feedback from many, many, many of you that it's really seeming to profoundly impact you. And I'm really kind of amazed <laughs> by some of the feedback I'm getting. So please, please continue to give me feedback and also um, just continue to enjoy it. And if you haven't signed up for it yet, please do it's it's available for you so thank you thank you thank you thank you and um yeah beautiful powerful time we're in and 
Thank you for being part of it. I've been loving connecting with so many of you and yeah, so much beautiful stuff coming alive and in my, the individual sessions I'm having with people and in the group sessions I'm having with people and in your comments on these videos and like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> it's, I don't know. There's a, very little in the world that's more satisfying or awe inspiring than seeing, you know, the true essence of the soul being that is you suddenly waking up and coming fully alive on this planet because we need you. <laughs> we need every single one of you. We need every single one of us. That's what we're doing all together. Wonderful. I will see you very soon.